Debian is often regarded as one of those distros that moves in a fairly slow fashion update-wise, obviously disregarding the whole Debian SID thing. But it's not just with updates, also their general management changes. But that's not really a bad thing, because this meant that Debian is one of the very, very few distros that has full, official, 32-bit desktop support. Now, the technical naming around this stuff can get really confusing. You'll often hear things like i386, i686, x86, which all mean slightly different things within this 32-bit category, but this is in opposition to what most distributions have as a baseline being x86-64, x64, or AMD-64. Once again, it doesn't get any less confusing in modern times. Now, there are a handful of other distros that do support 32-bit systems. Things like Void Linux, Gentoo, NixOS, Alpine, Arch Linux 32. But most of the others are just a Debian fork. Things like Anti-X, for example. But soon, that might be coming to an end of sorts, or at least a very important change to how it's currently being handled. Recently, bits from the release team, Cambridge Sprint Update was released onto the Debian mailing list. And whilst there is a bunch of other interesting things in here as well, the part I want to focus on is a future for the i386 architecture. Insofar as they still do, we anticipate the kernel, DI, and image teams will cease to support i386 in the near future. Following that, there are two routes into running i386 as a multi-architecture option on an otherwise AMD64 system, so on a 64-bit system, or as an i386 to root on another architecture system. We're not planning to make i386 a partial architecture in the way Ubuntu has. Architecture Any will still contain i386, so everything builds by default. Maintainers who wish to drop i386 support can do so after coordination with the reverse build dependencies of their package, as with dropping support for any other architecture. We also like to note that we have no opposition to changes to the baseline when these changes land. It's a port matter. So basically the way that I understand it is the 32-bit image is going to go away. But if you want to go and settle this stuff up for yourself, you can go and do so. But due to this image going away, maintainers may want to step away from maintaining it and they just don't really feel like it matters that much anymore. So with that going away, you're going to start seeing this ripple out effect where there is less and less 32-bit support. Basically, it's not going away but it's going to be a lot more annoying to do. Now, one of the problems I really have with Linux developers is they will often say i386 when they don't mean i386 whatsoever, and Debian is exactly in that camp. When you say i386, this actually refers to the Intel 8386. This is a CPU from 19. 85. That's not what we're talking about here. Support for that, you know, it got dropped fairly recently. It was only about 11 years ago when that got dropped. That's not in the kernel anymore. That's not what we're talking about. And we're not even referring to the i486. This was launched in 1989, and there was discussion about dropping this architecture sometime last year. I don't know if that actually went through, but for a, what, 33-year-old architecture? I think it's about time that you can drop it. So Debian, like many annoying Linux developers, use i386 to refer to the whole 32-bit line. i386, i486, i586, and i686, along with any of the weird modifications and marketing terminology used along the way. Now, I understand why it's like this. I just don't like that it's like this. Linux first started on the 8386, the i386 CPU, but Linux also support for a bunch of different architectures. But when you first start on this CPU, there's going to be a lot of build options designed around that architecture, and many of those build options have been grandfathered in and are still being used today. So you will often see compile options that refer to i386 when that's not at all what it's supposed to mean. And as we can see from the Debian supported architecture page, that's exactly what is happening. i386, Intel, AMD, Cyrix, 
NSC, Transmeta, VIA, all companies that existed prior to Intel and AMD having an absolute vice grip on the creation of desktop CPUs, supported the original x86 platform, now requires 686 class CPU. So they are using it wrong because this is the term that they've always used. Getting rid of all this complex architecture stuff, 32-bit systems are going to get a lot harder on Debian. But when we're talking about a 32-bit system, what are we actually referring to? Because all modern hardware is 64-bit, at least the hardware you're going to be running on your desktop. So how old does the system need to be for this to really be a concern? Now, the answer to that question is a little bit different whether we're talking AMD or Intel. I'll start with Intel. So the early Pentium 4s, the early Pentium dual cores, and the entire Pentium M line, those are 32-bit CPUs. If you want to know which ones are which, I might leave some lists in the description down below. From what I can tell, the newest Intel 32-bit CPU was released somewhere around 2007. On the AMD side, it's a little bit older, but also a little bit clearer. When AMD went 64-bit, they started a whole new series called the K8 series. This started with Opteron in 2003. Now, there is a couple of 32-bit architectures sprinkled into 2004, but that's pretty much the absolute cutoff point. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say for the vast majority of people, this doesn't really matter. I know there is a lot of you guys running Haswell CPUs and Sandy Bridge CPUs, but even for Sandy Bridge, this doesn't matter whatsoever. You are so far from the cutoff point, it is not even worth thinking about. Sandy Bridge released in 2011, four years after going 64-bit. Now, I know a lot of you guys are really big ThinkPad fans, so let's put this into ThinkPad terms. When we're looking at things like the X200, the X300, the X400, things like that, there is no concern whatsoever. It is a problem if you're looking at things like the X60, X40, especially the X40. The X60, the lower powered models, do have a 32-bit CPU. The more higher end ones do have 64 bits, so if you are looking at buying one, do pay attention to what you're actually buying. But this is a very easy equation to answer. Does it have a 32-bit CPU? Okay, I need to run a 32-bit distro. The more annoying problem are the devices out there, a lot of them existed for way too long, that have a 64-bit CPU, no problem there, and a 32-bit EFI. Now, this was a problem on the early Intel Max, and is also a problem on seemingly random Atom laptops. Now, it's not like there is absolutely no hope with the system, and you just have to run a 32-bit distro. You can bootstrap a 64-bit distro onto one of these systems, and thanks to some changes in System D as of last year, this has gotten quite a bit easier. It's still not as straightforward as 64-bit distro, 64-bit CPU, 64-bit UEFI, you know, like a sensibly made system. But it can be done, you just might need to do a little bit more reading. To be fair, if you're trying to run Linux on one of these old Macs, you're probably doing a bit of reading anyway, so a little bit extra probably isn't that big of a deal. I know there are people out there running this hardware, and you may not be happy about this change. But Debian is a volunteer-run project, and it had to happen eventually. These 32-bit CPUs are not being made anymore, they are only getting older and older and older, and there are less and less people making use of this hardware, and it cannot be supported in perpetuity. For now, some level of support is going to remain. I would not be surprised if over the coming years, you start seeing maintainers dropping support for a package, they start being removed, and then eventually, Debian says, okay, we no longer officially support 32-bit. But then, it's not like you couldn't just run an old version of Debian and compile things as you need to compile them. But at that point, you are very much on your own to getting things working. So, let me know. Are you one of those people that still runs some 32-bit hardware? Is that hardware your main system, or is it just something you happen to have, you know, sitting around because you like to experiment with it? I would love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, see the link in the description 
down below. That's going to be it for me, and maybe I should go buy myself a ThinkPad. Yeah.